Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Murray. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple techniques where you can improve your motion graphics or your intro specifically in After Effects because usually people have their animation and stuff and it looks great but there are sometimes a couple tweaks they can make to make it look even better. Uh, I'm going to focus on three main techniques but throughout the video there's going to be a lot of different techniques you can use, a lot of tips and tricks. So if that does help you guys, consider leaving a like on the video, that would really help. And if you're interested in visual effects, editing, filmmaking, PC setups, streaming, stuff like that, consider subscribing, sticking around, because there are a bunch of tutorials and just entertainment in general. So consider sticking around for that. But without further ado, let's jump in. Alrighty, so here we are in After Effects, and uh, this is just a template from... Uh, I think it was Dope Motions, uh, Nickel is the host. But uh, I was using this template and I kind of wanted to add some some extra coolness to the, the logo reveal right at the end. You can see the little um, light flicker essentially, the light shimmer. So it's something that adds some really nice dimension and kind of a cool look to the end of the logo. So that's also a nice little trick. I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. I'm just going to delete these so we can start off from scratch. So we essentially, after our whole logo is animated, after everything is done, we need to make sure that we don't need to do any other editing, otherwise we're going to have to change a bunch of stuff after we do this effect, because you're going to have to duplicate some stuff, and that'll make a little more sense in just a sec. So what I'm going to do is with this logo selected, I'm going to duplicate it with Control D, then I'm going to do Control Y, or I can just right click and I can just do a new solid, and I'm just going to make sure it's white, that's important. And then what I'm going to do is just rotate it uh, something like 45 degrees and just grab the mask tool and just do that I guess and then just gonna feather that with as well feather the mask just a little bit and then I'm gonna drag it between the two layers that I the one that I duplicated and I'm gonna just do luma matte and you can see it's kind of but it's a uh, little shimmer there let's just grab the position here let's move it across so you can see it there I'm actually gonna make the mask a bit smaller Let's move it back a bit more. Let's grab the feather and just reduce the feather a little bit so you can see it a bit more. So if I move it across here, let's just hide this mask. I move it across, you can see, oh, that's the feather actually. <laughs> let's grab the position here and you can see that it does this little shimmer. So all I need to do is grab the position, keyframe here, move ahead in time, move it across, make sure it goes all the way. And you'll see, let's do a ramp preview. You can see it does that shimmer there. So very nice. If you want to do a second one, I'll just go down a couple seconds or a couple frames, keyframe that, and then do page down once to move one keyframe ahead. And I'm just going to copy this keyframe and paste it in there. And then I'm going to copy that other keyframe where it's at its end position and just paste that in as well. So if you take a look here, we've got this final effect. So we've got two of them, which is cool. So it's a little too fast, so let's just drag them out a bit, separate them. Looks pretty cool. And you can always adjust the time as well, so we can make that slower. Uh, and then the second one goes fast, but you can slow that one down as well. Pretty cool. So that's the first trick, on to the second trick. What I have here is just a logo from Hickson is the YouTube channel. He makes logos and stuff like that. I'm not, I couldn't make this kind of logo. It's not my style, but uh, it's a pretty cool logo nonetheless. And you can see there's that shimmer effect I was just talking about, but I'm actually going to talk about this glitch effect here. It's pretty cool. Let's just play it back real quick. So pretty cool. Obviously with the sound effects, it would sound much better. It would kind of draw you into the scene a bit more. So we're going to quickly take a look at this glitch effect here. I'm just going to go into this and uh, we're going to go into the editing part of here where I have the adjustment layers. So all I've done is I just have an adjustment layer. Just ignore this one. This is just for the example we're going to do. With this adjustment layer, I have the curves and the directional blur on it. I've keyframed it. So let's quickly go through what that looks like. I'm just going to hide that one and show this one. We can go through what this all looks like. So with the directional blur, let's just go ahead and reset these properties here. So just going to reset the curves as well. Essentially, our adjustment layer, after we've created it, we drag in the curves and we drag in the directional blur from our effects and presets what we're going to do is where we want the effect to start let's go up to right i'd say here maybe one frame before let's go one frame before and uh, what we'll do is do the 
low length and then we'll go ahead one frame in time a page down and I'll take it up to about 70 so that kind of adds some blur you can also change the direction of which it blurs but I'm just gonna leave it the default because I like that then I'm gonna go down into time and I'm just going to take it back down to zero percent so it kind of comes in and then it fades out now what we have to do as well with the curves is we're gonna just essentially have a uh, create the uh, keyframe here and then we're going to drag this keyframe all the way down to where we want it to finish and then obviously when we change some stuff it's going to add a keyframe automatically so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the red uh, let's pull up the red uh, we can it's just messing around with it essentially so let's just you know pull it in random directions see what it does uh yeah i mean kind of cool it's a nice rgb uh glitch kind of thing let's just mess around more so i guess that looks kind of cool uh let's go back here let's copy this keyframe and then paste it there so that it's not here during this part of the animation it'll only start once the glitch happens so kind of cool i guess and then when we go into our main composition here with it all done so you can see it's pretty cool uh, the, the glitch obviously with the RGB glitch looks very nice along with the blur what I've done with the shake I've just duplicated the footage. This is the footage here I just duplicated it grabbed the position and I just added the expression wiggle 20 comma 10 and I just kind of had it where I wanted it to happen So this is where it would start it kind of shake and then I also grabbed the opacity and just fade it out And it would kind of duplicate a little bit which is nice because it adds a little bit of like a, a shimmer kind of thing So uh, next trick we're going to take a look at is actually the beginning here where you see the the wings come in like this It's a pretty cool little technique instead of just having the wings static and just move in and bounce in I actually have them kind of bend and warp which is nice. I mean not everyone's gonna want that but some people are so this is how you're gonna go about that so if i go into the main composition here with the, the essentially the the parts that you can edit uh, where they're all separated into their own layers what i have here is i've created the puppet tool puppet tool that's what it's called and uh so with the puppet tool right puppet tool I keep saying puppet tool so with the puppet tool, why why can i not say puppet tool so with the puppet tool right up here, I've essentially just created them right over here. Let's uh, drag them in here. So let's duplicate one of these just to show you what I'm talking about. And uh, let's delete that puppet tool. All right, so delete. And let's just solo this just so we can not get distracted by the other layers. So instead of just moving it so like we keyframe the position out and then it kind of comes back in, instead of doing that, what we can do is create a puppet tool or a, it's an anchor, we'll call it. We'll create an anchor there. We'll do one here halfway down and another one at the bottom. And so when we go to our effects with E on the keyboard, open the puppet tool, open the mesh, open the deform. We have our puppet tools here, the three anchor points here. So if I just do U, uh, it'll show me the keyframes. It automatically creates the keyframes for their position. So let's say our endpoint we want it to have back here. And then we want these puppet tools to obviously start way out here right so then when it comes in it's it does its thing but what we need to do is we need to stagger these just a little bit not too much and it'll add a bit a bit of that warp right so now it'll look like that kind of come in but there's no bounce obviously so what i've done is i have a previous video on how to do this specific effect with a, an expression so you would add a bounce effect to these properties. I have it right over here. So I'm just going to copy it here, but I'll include the video link on how to use this expression all the way at the top here in the cards. I'll also include the video in the description. I'll copy that expression and I'll alt click all of these positions. So alt click and I'll press V to paste that expression. Uh, I'll do it for the other ones. So you can see and there. So what we've done is we've created this bounce effect, which is cool. And uh, obviously in the video, I talk about adding bounce and subtracting bounce to reduce the amount of bounce. Those are these properties here, but I won't go through that again because I do that in another in that other video. Then essentially I'll just have this. It would just kind of bounce in and do its thing, which is cool, which is what I have with these wings. So nice little neat effect. Also I have this mouth, which is, uh, I don't know if you noticed it before, but the mouth opens. So that's also really nice. What I've done there is let's go find this. So what I've done with this, I've just duplicated the face or the main head here. I masked around the mouth so I could keep that mouth. 
And then what I've done is I've also added the puppet tool here. So let's go to the effects and go to the puppet tool. You can see I have the puppet tool just like I have with the wings. I have the keyframes here. So what I've done is I've just opened it and I've just added some color in the back there. So it's another layer here. This is what the mouth looks like. That's just underneath this mouth layer with the puppet tool. So what I've done is I just have my puppet tool here. It's all set to its default and then I pull it out. I've had easy ease keyframes, so I've just selected them, press F9 and then kind of moved it around a little bit to its next position here. But it kind of almost a yawn, but it's just opening its mouth add a bit of movement and then it kind of closes its mouth back. So that's very nice. And so to conclude, obviously these aren't necessary steps, but they're definitely very nice, especially if you want to make your animations look better or more professional or just more pleasing. So if you guys enjoyed, consider subscribing. I am going to be making more in the future. A bunch of tutorials on filmmaking, visual effects, editing, all the Adobe stuff, streaming, stuff like that. Consider sticking around. But until next time, remember, keep smiling, keep shooting. One take wonder. Wow. That's the quickest way I've ever done it before. Two minutes of recording for an intro and an outro. That's crazy.